about some of the really cool things that the Axe 8 has in it. And um, some of these I just can't do it justice in this video, but I want to go through these, some of these menu items so you know what they are. The first one is, let's go to the setup here. Again, I don't have anything selected up here or anything like that. If you click setup here, what you're looking at now is the global output EQ for your Axe 8. Now, you may never need to touch this, but it's a really cool tool to have. Um, if you need to add overall gain to your overall signal, uh, leaving it regardless of the presets individually or you need to take them down, this is a place that you can do it globally for everything right here. If you double click a slider, it will go to zero. That's the other thing. So if you're trying to get it precise, just double click it and it'll go back. And here's where you can be in a room where you can say, you know what, I don't need any sounds that are really over 63 or under 63. And I don't need any sounds that are over 16. So that's a global way to sort of fix your sounds. Anything over eight, maybe, maybe you want to do that about here or something. Because most cabinets don't put out over anything over 6K, 7K. If they do, it doesn't sound very good. It's very fizzy. So this is a place where you can adjust these things globally going into a PA for a gig or something like that. Um, it's just sort of, but know that, know that if you do this, it's always going to be there and you may forget that it's there. I tend to not do this and try and design my presets the way I like uh, on the preset by preset level, but this is a really great way to do it. And again, this controls the output one on the back and this controls the output two. Um, potentially where you have an effects loop or something like that. So the next thing is, and you need to read the manual for this stuff, but there's a MIDI function here where it will take program control changes sent to it where it will do things. And this is really good for a band like, let's say, Periphery, uh, where they're playing songs, they know their song list, and they know the song changes, and there's a click track the drummer's playing to. This can actually do the scene changes for them. This can actually change the presets for each song where you don't have to do that on stage. It's a lot of pre-tour programming work, but it lets you do that so that you just run the set list and this, this runs off the click track universally that everybody's playing to from a DAW and it sends program changes out. Pretty cool stuff. And again, I would advise you to get into the manual if you want to get into that kind of stuff. Most of us aren't going to be using that for our gigs, but... If you're touring, this is a great uh, a potential resource. I want to go a little more in depth into the preset foot switches and the great options that are available. And I love what Fractal did with this. First of all, you'll see that you've got a latch or a momentary switch, which is really cool. Let's say you want to put a rotary block in here, um, for example, a nice Leslie organ. All right, you could come here to this setting and you could set it up so that instead of just turning it on and it stays on and off, you could set the switch to where it's momentary and the rotary is only on while you're holding the switch down. And as soon as you take your foot off, the rotary is going to come off. So you don't have to click it on and off as soon as you're just clicking it on. And as long as you hold your foot there, it's on. So that's kind of cool. Or maybe you've got an echo that you want to fade out or feedback on itself as long as you're holding it down until you take it off. That's what this momentary latch foot switch does. It's really cool and they work by preset. So uh, it's not global right here the way this is set up. So you could literally have a delay, do one uh, momentary in one preset, but be a latch in another, for example. Uh, if you're a fan of the guitar player Oz Noy, who, which I am, he's got a tremolo that he does that's really, really rapid that he'll literally trigger in uh, with the with the momentary, so he's playing a note, bang, and it'll go while he puts it down and takes his foot off of it. It's very very funny and cool, uh, cool sound. So that's how you could do something like that. You could put that tremolo there, set this tremolo up to really really fast, like, and it'll just sort of warp your note for that moment if you leave that a momentary instead of latch. So you just click it down, it'll warp the note for a second. As soon as you take your foot off, it's gone. So that's what the momentary and latch does. Now, this lets you define those one through eight foot switches on the front of your Axe 8, what you want them to do. They can do different things. They can turn blocks on and off, but they can also control things like, am I going to switch to preset one or two or three or four? 
Do I want my banks to go up or down? And there are other places to do that as well. Do I want to switch to scenes? You can make these times. Do I want a, a looper control here where the looper is working? Do I want my amp to go from an X to a Y setting, for example? Do I want nothing to happen? Do I want to have a control switch, which you can read more about in the manual? I've used this, for example, to have a Leslie ramp up a little bit slowly over time. So it's a really wonderful options that you've got here uh, to customize your pedal board like it's a Bradshaw rig or something about what do you want these to be, and they can vary by preset. Every preset can have a different sort of configuration where maybe you've got your drive block down here and a scene control here, but you've, or you've got all your scene controls up here where you're switching, but you can still turn things on and off down here. It's really up to you and how you like to work best. Now, some people may only use this uh, for a couple of songs uh, on a gig or something, and they don't want it to be by preset. Well, you can also set this up to be global. So that's very cool. doesn't matter what your preset setting is. This is going to override that. And you're going to say, hey, you know what? I always want my drive one to be in function one. I don't care what the preset is or anything. Whenever I have a drive one in the preset, I want foot switch one to turn on and off. Now, the drive can be anywhere in this. doesn't matter where it is. You might have set the drive... Um, you know, uh, in a different place over here. But if I believe if you set it up in global right here, it's going to override it. So that is a cool function that lets you decide whether you want to do that or not. Um, it comes default with preset one, two, three, and four. Um, when you click the function switches, which we'll get to in a minute, you can change preset, uh, Foot switch one is preset one, put that two, put three. So that's, but it just lets you have another option. I tend to do them in presets, but you can decide what you want. Last, you notice that there are function switches one, two, three on the right side of your axe eight. They come preset, but uh, with these values, but you can change them. So you could say, you know what, for F1, which is up high, that's bank up. You could make that any one of these things. I like to use F3 as tempo tap for a click switch. And then if I hold it, it turns it into a tuner. And the reason I like F3 to do that is it's the foot switch that's closest to the end of the pedal board, which makes it a little easier. So I'm not tap dancing a tap dance or a tuner. But you can make these things do different things. You can uh, move things around. Uh, I would advise you to check your manual out. When you look down at your foot switches, they'll be all blank. And you'll be like, what happened? Well, they're there but you can't turn them on off from your foot switches until you assign them to the specific foot switches you want. So I was telling you earlier about tap tempo and some people say, hey, when I tap the tempo, my delay doesn't change and I really want it to change. Well, that's because if you go into your delay settings, you have it set up with the head tempo at none. And if you do that, your tap will have no effect. The tap tempo usually works when you sync it to a specific beat per minute and type of delay. And so here are all the different values you can use. A lot of people like, like me, like a dotted eighth note. Now, when I pick a dotted eighth note at 120 beats per minute, notice what happens here. This grays out and turns to parentheses, but it automatically says, okay, that's 375 milliseconds. It's a mathematical function of 120 beats per minute and a dotted eighth note gives me 375 milliseconds. All right, if I change this tempo down to 100, watch. Guess what? My delay time went up to 450. If I set it higher, if I do it higher, it went down to 321. It's a mathematical function when you attach it to this. Now, if I go to a quarter note, at 120 beats a minute, and there are tables that tell you how to do this, it's going to give me 500 milliseconds automatically. Now, you can also say none and just automatically set this to whatever parameter you want, and it will always stay there, but your tap will not work then. So maybe you want to do a boost for a solo in a preset. There are several ways to do this. There are four or five different ways to do this. Um, one way is add a filter block at the end of your signal chain, just a filter block. They don't use up a lot of CPU. And then raise your level 
to whatever you want the boost to be. I tend to find about 3.5 dB is perfect. It really punches you out from the band at that point, but it's not, doesn't cause clipping and isn't obnoxious usually. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is you don't need the filter block at all, but you go to your output, and if your solo is on scene two, you go to scene two, and you go back over here for main scene two, and you set this at 3.5. That is another way to have your solo boost out. And whenever this gets clicked to scene two, when you go to your solo, boom, notice how this lit up now. That's now gonna boost it up by that much. So that's another way to do it. Yet another way to do it is to, um, maybe you want your amp to go X, Y. Now you'll get a little bit of an audible gap, but you could copy your amp setting that you really like over to Y and then you can turn Y up a little bit in the level and add your level that way. Maybe you've got the amp sounding a little dirtier for your lead or something like that. So that when you go to scene two and you want the amp set on Y for scene two and X for scene one, then you get the boost. Or maybe in your foot switches, you decide that you, instead of scene one and two, you want amp X, Y toggle. And so when you toggle amp X to Y, that's how you get your boost. So there's lots of ways to get there. There's so if you go to controllers and you go to modifiers, this will tell you what is actually being used right now in your preset. If you've got nothing used, there are no none assigned. But what's beautiful about this is it tells you what is assigned and being used, and that's helpful. For example, I have an external two pedal set to my Wawa in this. And I've got that set so that I have to switch it on with the foot switch to turn. I don't have it automatically set so it comes on and off. But then external two will control it. But notice that I also have the same pedal controlling how fast or slow my rotary goes and how fast or slow my, my univibe goes. So I've got this going down from this range. It'll make it go fast or slow. And I've got it going right here from my rotary, and I've predetermined exactly I want it to go as low as this, a real nice slow rotary sound, as fast as that. But I've also changed the curve a little bit. You know, I've got the mid way down here. It's not a straight line. I've got to change the slope. Um, so it kind of ramps up slow and then gets, uh, then it has a real sharp uh, thing to where it goes fast. And that's just for that pedal for the rotary. That is not the same curve that's on, for example, the wah. That's another cool thing about this. So that's a good place to see what's on or off, what's going on, what's being used, what's not being used.